Positive psychology is the scientific study of what makes life most worth living. It is a science, and science requires testing theories against evidence. It is not a sequel to The Secret, and should not be confused with untested self-help, fly-by-night motivational speakers, or New Age philosophy. Much of psychology has been concerned with answering the question, what is wrong with you? It has sought to make individuals less miserable, to treat pathology and mental illness. The goal of the positive psychology movement is to make normal life more fulfilling. It asks the question, what is right with you? Instead of trying to help a patient go from minus eight back to zero, the goal is to help individuals move up the other side of the scale. The field is intended to complement, not replace, traditional psychology. It does not seek to deny the importance of studying how things go wrong, but it does assert that strength is as important as weakness, and that it is just as important to build on the best things in life as to repair the worst. Positive psychology is concerned with increasing well-being. Is well-being the same thing as happiness? Not exactly. Martin Seligman, co-founder of the positive psychology movement, describes well-being as being made up of five pillars. Positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishment. Branches of exploration in positive psychology. The term flow was coined by Mike Csikszentmihalyi, co-founder of the positive psychology movement. Flow is a state of absorption in one's work. It is characterized by intense concentration, loss of self-awareness, a feeling of being perfectly challenged, neither bored nor overwhelmed, and a sense that time is flying. Flow is an intrinsically rewarding experience. It can also help one achieve a goal or improve skills and is highly related to creative insight. Mindfulness is intentionally focused awareness of one's immediate experience. The experience is one of moment-by-moment -moment attention to thoughts, emotions, physical sensations, and surroundings. To practice mindfulness is to become grounded in the present moment. Benefits include reduction of stress, anxiety, depression, and chronic pain. Learned optimism is the idea that a talent for joy can be cultivated. That said, it's important to note the research tells us that the path to fulfillment requires considerable hard work. There are few, if any, shortcuts to sustained happiness and well-being. Anyone who says otherwise is selling something. It is contrasted with learned helplessness, which is when one believes that he or she has no control over what occurs, and that external forces, such as genetics or social class, ultimately dictate his or her ability to accomplish a task or succeed. Evidence suggests that well-being is not simply the result of a fortunate spin of the genetic roulette wheel. There are things that people can actively do to lead more fulfilling lives. Professor Howard Gardner is leading a large-scale effort to identify individuals and institutions that exemplify good work, work that is excellent in quality, socially responsible, and meaningful to its practitioners. The project also seeks to determine how best to increase the incidence of good work in our society. The Good Work Project argues that society as a whole would be better off to encourage individuals to pursue excellence for its own sake, to gravitate toward projects where they regularly achieve a sense of flow, and to find positions that will help them achieve higher levels of fulfillment. Is positive psychology an easy answer to all of society's problems? No, let's not be naive. But we must ask ourselves, if we applied the tenets of positive psychology to education, business, and government, if we encouraged individuals and communities to build on their strengths, if we focused attention on the pillars of well-being, if we channeled more energy into what makes life worth living, what might be possible?